welcome to Grace for the Day. Hallelujah and bless the Lord. God bless you. I will give you a moment to come on and um, we're going to get started in the word of the Lord and uh, allow him to speak to us. We're talking about the promises of God and we are reminded consistently that God keeps his promises. Yes, he does. People may fail, whether intentional or not. They may fail, but God, you know, in this 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 day and time, it's always been that way, but even more so now, we must be reminded. Yes, you did. Hey, brother. Hey there, James Jr. Yes, you did. And, um, and we must be reminded and remind ourselves that God keeps his promises. People may try. They may have the best. Hey, Mother Austin. They may have the best of intentions. But God, the script, we sang that song growing up. Jesus never fails. Jesus never fails. Heaven and earth may pass away. But Jesus never fails. Oh, I tried him and he never fails. Try to mend, he never fails. Oh, heaven and earth shall pass away. But Jesus never fails. Hey there, Sister Clara. So we must remind ourselves that whatever we're encountering, God never fails. People may fail and you can't get mad with folk. They may have the best of intentions, but they are not God. They are not God. Glory to our great God. God never fails. I was listening this morning to a man of God preach. And it rem- I'm going to say this, then I'm going to get to my scripture. I promise. Where did I put it? Okay, wait, wait, wait. Okay. So I was getting, looking, listening to him talk about the plagues in Egypt. And how God had promised, had told the children, told Israel, Moses, what to do. You know, put blood on the doorpost. That was the last thing that God had said for them uh, to do. And they did it. And what I, what I heard while he was talking about it, he said the next morning, there were, the scripture says there was not a house except the children of Israel that did not have death visit their house. And the king said, he didn't say, let's find out who did this. Let's figure out the culprit. Let's try to devise a plan so we can avoid this happen next time. He knew it was because he wouldn't let the children of Israel go. It was clear to him, God did it. Now, I want you to hear this. We miss when God is doing it. We miss when God is speaking. We miss because we're looking, if you look in our society even now, people are looking at all the things that are happening and they don't ever see God did it because of sin. God did it because of rebelliousness. God allowed it, lifted his favor, lifted his hand because we refuse to obey. We refuse to submit If the king of Egypt understood God was doing, hey, Felicia, honey, that God was doing it, I love you back, then we understand that God still moves in our times. We should always want the favor of God, the mercy of God, the grace of God, and today the peace of God. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We have made God, uh, this, 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 this idea that he never does anything to correct us. If you're a parent, you correct your child. I'm not saying you beat them to death. I'm saying you correct them. However that discipline them, you love them. Let me read my scripture today. I want to go back to Isaiah 57, 19. I want to start there. Good morning, Cousin Sharon. It says, peace, peace to 
to him that is far off and to him that is near, saith the Lord, and I will heal him. I will heal him. I believe that's pivotal and important for us to understand about peace. Our healing comes because he's speaking peace over our lives. He's speaking peace over our lives. He's speaking peace over our lives. And he's speaking healing. He says a promise. I will heal him. I will heal. I will produce. I will bring. I will manifest healing. Healing in your finances. Healing in your money. Healing in your relationship. Healing in your marriage. Healing in your mind. I will bring healing. I will. That's a promise. I will heal him. Though the enemy, don't tell, I'm trying to get close to y'all. Though the enemy may have had negative or evil intentions. God will bring healing. God will speak life. He will show favor. He will show mercy. So don't let what the enemy tells you and the lies that he tells you and speaks about you. Don't believe the lies of the adversary and forget to believe what God says about you. Now, let me read my next scripture. He says, I will hear what the Lord will speak for he will speak peace unto his people and to his saints. He says, I will hear, I'm listening for, I'm listening for God. I am listening for God. I'm listening for him because he's going to speak peace to me. He's going to speak peace to me. He is going to speak peace to his people. How many of you could use a little more peace? The adversary tries to steal. Listen, the scripture says he comes to steal our peace. He comes to steal your peace so you don't accomplish what you uh, plan and what God plans for you. Let me read this to you from my mama's old Bible. I'm going to read it. Psalm 85 verse 8. It says, where among, 85, I'm sorry, I looked at the wrong one. At verse 6, verse 8, 85 and 8, yes. He says, I am listening carefully. To all the Lord is saying, for he speaks peace to his people, his saints. That's us. He speaks peace to us if they will only stop their sinning. There is a requirement from us to live in a manner that brings honor to God. To live in a manner that God will get glory. But he says, I'm listening carefully. We listen to everybody else. We believe everybody else. We, we hear all the negative things that people who don't love us say. The people who have an ulterior motive. God doesn't have an ulterior motive. He didn't have a, a he didn't have some uh, something that he's trying to get. Uh, get from you other than to bless you. Everything that God has for you. If he's saying, don't do this. I don't want you to have that. Though it may look good. As they say, everything that glitters ain't gold. He has goodness and mercy following you. If he says that's not for you, then that means he has something better in store for you. He has greater for you. He has peace for you. He has hope for you. He says, I will, I am listening. That's actively listen, actively hearing. I am listening. That is the continual openness to hear God carefully to all the Lord is saying. For he speaks peace to his people, his saints. He speaks peace. You're hearing something other than peace. Yes, the Lord will correct you. But even in that, there's a peace. 
Hallelujah. Even in God saying, uh, you didn't do that the way I wanted you to. He's still, there's still a peace because I know he is moving things. He is ordering things to help me and to bless me and to guide me. His way is perfect. Glory to God. I want to go to the next scriptures, Philippians 4. Yes, that's exactly right, Janet Travis. He just wants us to be obedient to his word because he knows where the blessings are. He knows where the favor is. He knows where goodness is. And we're following everything but. We want to hurry up and get to the next thing. Whereas God is saying, I need you to slow down. And as a friend of mine says, get to the walk. Hurry up and get to the walk. So when you find an absence of peace and there's discontent, you need to, to step back and say, Lord, where's your peace? I need to be wherever that is. Jesus said, my peace I give you, but I don't give you peace like the world. It's not based on how the world behaves. It's not based on stuff. I'm giving you peace that's perpetual, that will last, that will endure, that will carry you through. Let's read on. Philippians 4, 7 says, and the peace of God I won't finish this today. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Now, if you don't remember any other scripture, I need you to remember that one. Let me read this to you. I want to start at verse four, though. This is Philippians four and four. I want to start there because it gives good measure. He says, this is my mama's old Bible, y'all. Always be full of joy in the Lord. We could stop right there and say, you're going through a trial. You're being tested. Your faith is being tested. He said, always be full of joy in the Lord. He's saying, during this test, still be full of joy. How can you be joyful? Because my eyes aren't looking at what I'm seeing and hearing. I'm, my eyes are looking at him. 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 And he makes my pathway clear. He makes, he opens a door before me that no man can close. I am almost out of time. He says, I say it again, rejoice. Let everyone see that you are unselfish and considerate in all you do. Remember that the Lord is coming soon. Verse six, don't worry about anything. Instead, pray about everything. Tell God your needs and don't forget to thank him for his answers. Verse seven, I'll pick this up tomorrow. If you do this, you will experience God's peace. If you do this, you will experience God's peace, which is far more wonderful than the human mind can understand. His peace will keep your thoughts and your hearts quiet and at rest as you trust in Christ Jesus. As you trust in Christ Jesus. Listen, my time's gone. I'm going to pick up that verse tomorrow from my mama's old Bible. I want us to read that again. I want us to understand that the peace that God gives is greater than anything our minds can eat. It doesn't make any sense why you're at peace and the enemy is just throwing his best punch. He's trying to drain you. He's trying to steal from you. You see what the enemy's doing and you still have peace. You still have joy. You still uh, maintain like Job. I mind integrity. I hold fast. I will not let it go. I will praise the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. I'm going to still bless him. Praise will be the fruit of my lips. <sighs> he promises peace. If you ever find yourself, my pastor puts it this way. If you ever have that hurry, hurry, quick, quick, got to do it now. I need it now. Step back and say, Lord, I want your peace. I want your direction. Help me to see clearly. 
I don't want to make a mistake because I'm being pushed. Let your peace guard my heart. Let your peace guard my heart. My time is gone. Let's pray. Father, thank you so much for your word. Your word will not return to you void and unprofitable, but it will accomplish everything you send it out to. So Father, accomplish your will in us. Accomplish your will in every believer, every viewer, every, let your will be done. Let us not be shaken or disturbed by uh, things not moving as fast as we want. We trust you to order our steps. We don't want to miss you. Help us to see when you've opened a door before us. But we don't want to walk in any doors you've not ordained for us. The blessings of the Lord makes rich and adds no sorrow. Help us to be careful and to guard our hearts that we don't give away what you've given to us out of foolishness and trying to please other people. Help us, dear God, to be clear and to keep our hearts pure before you. Help us to keep our hearts pure before you that you will be pleased with our lives. We thank you now. We bind the adversary that comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy. Father, we thank you that no weapon formed against us will prosper. It will not yield the enemy or produce the enemy's intended outcome. Father, turn things around even now. Turn things around even now. Turn them around that you will get glory. Thank you for being our healer. You heal our bodies. You heal our minds. You heal our hearts. You heal our wounded spirits. You heal us of our past. Heal us of every negative word spoken about us, to us, and over us. We believe your report. Your thoughts about us are good and not evil to give us hope and expect it in. Thank you in advance because that you cause goodness and mercy to chase us down and to overtake us. We receive it done in the name of Jesus. So it is. Amen. God bless you. My time is gone. I know, I know, I know, I know. Listen, third Saturday, we'll have life class, Lord willing, and we'll be able to have some more time, more than these little 15 minutes. And uh, But I praise God for you all always joining me and sharing. Thank you for sharing. I see that our shares are up this morning. Bless you. Thank you for sharing the word of God. I believe somebody else needs it. You may not be able to go like we did when we were growing up. We'd go to folk houses and knock on the door and share the good news. You don't have to even do that. You can press share on your uh, screen and share the word of God. Listen, God's word still changes. God's word still moves. God's word still transforms lives. It does. So let's do our part in sharing the word of God wherever you find the word of God. All right, share the video, type in, catch the replay, hashtag graced for today. And join me in the morning at 7.15 a.m. Central Time, and we will look again into the word of Lord. Thank you for those of you who pray for me, continue to pray for me. I believe in God for speedy recovery. And uh, thank you for praying for grace for today. I believe God to open doors for us and to create avenues for the ministry of the word of God. All right. So, and thank you for those of you who give consistently. I pray God will increase you more and more in the mighty name of Jesus. Until then, remember, until tomorrow morning, remember this time spent in the word of God is never wasted. And you have been graced for today. Have a great day, everybody. Peace.